This is going to be a short follow-up video on this reliable electric 3000 watt continuous 6000 watt surge pure sine wave inverter. In the previous video I did extensive tests on this unit and the last test caused the unit to fail. Many of you wanted to know what the problem was if I could figure it out and after looking over this unit I found out more than likely what the problem is so I'm going to show you what it is and how I figured it out. But before I do that, I want to go over a couple of things first that was not clarified too well in the previous video. In the previous video, one of the tests was to check for efficiency of the unit converting from the low voltage DC to the higher voltage AC output. In order to do that, I showed you the AC output was 412 watts using a hairdryer on low heat. While the hairdryer was running, I measured the current going into the inverter from the battery using this clamp meter. Now what happened, when the meter was put on that cable, because it was so fat, you hear this close? It didn't close all the way. And as a result, I had an incorrect reading showing 28.2 amps. Luckily, one of the viewers brought it to my attention that the numbers didn't add up, and it made me look into it. And after looking at the footage, I was able to figure out what the reason was. Now I did test this a couple of times, the first time off camera, I used a 200 watt load on the AC output and I measured the current going into the unit, but I did not use the clamp meter for that. Instead, I used my WaveTech 27XT digital multimeter set for the 20 amp range and I connected it in series with the positive post of the inverter and the positive post of the 4D battery. I was able to obtain very accurate readings and I calculated the efficiency to be right around 86%. When I did the calculations with the clamp, I did it very quickly and I made a mistake and I showed 85.6. It's actually 85.6% of the battery power was going into the unit and the unit was putting out more. And as we know, you cannot get more out than you put in. But I just wanted to let you know, this inverter has an efficiency of around 86%. One other thing that was brought to my attention by a viewer was that the AC receptacle couldn't handle the higher level of current between the circular saw running and the toaster because the wiring to the receptacles was a smaller gauge. When I filmed the video, the first thing I did was perform the tests before opening the unit. And when I opened up the unit later, you could see that the wiring going to the receptacles is this red wire right here. It's smaller than this thicker red wire going to the terminal block. And it doesn't make sense to me because there's no reason why they couldn't have used a heavier wire between here and the board. Luckily, it's an easy fix. Just pop out this one connector, replace this wire, solder it onto the connector for the receptacles because if you think about it, there's no notification on here mentioning a maximum current output at the receptacles and in your mind you're figuring, okay, this is a 3000 watt unit, I should be able to plug in a circular saw at the same time while using the other receptacle to maybe power a toaster oven or any other high current appliance. So this really should have the same ability as the terminal block. As a result of the smaller wire going to the receptacle and the extremely high current drain coming off the 4D battery, it caused the voltage to drop to around 95 volts. If we used a heavier wire, it probably would have stayed around 100 or 105 volts, even with the heavy load. Usually when an inverter fails, when you go to turn it on, it'll go into overload, or when you turn it on, it may not go into overload, but you will not get an AC output. The cause of that is usually a blown MOSFET. And when these things blow, they don't go nicely. They usually explode and you're going to see carbon on the heat sink. So what you want to do is inspect each one of these very carefully. And if you don't see anything that looks cracked or burned up, usually they're going to be okay. And that's the case with this unit after it happened during the last test. If you find one or two that's burned up, all you'd have to do is just desolder it from the board and replace it with the exact same MOSFET. So after allowing the inverter to sit overnight, disconnected from the battery, I connected it up to my power supply unit, and here's the output at the receptacle, and I have another camera over here that you can see the face, 
I turned it on and something very interesting happened. Let me show you. Right here you can see we're already on and connected. I just have to turn the switch on right over here. Keep a very close eye over here on the right and you can take a look right over here at the reading. You hear that ticking sound? Look at the fluctuation, 130, 134, 133. It's ticking away and that's flashing. I'm gonna show you what I discovered. The ticking was coming from right in this area over here, especially at this board in this area. So what I did is I took my thermal camera. With this thermal camera, I went over the entire board looking for an area that might be hot. And look right there, look at that. And it takes me right to the board, straight in the back. Now this board over here is what turns the fans on and off. It shuts the unit down in case it gets too hot. So this has control over the output at the AC receptacle. And using this closer, what I can do is, let me turn it on again. And you can see it flashing and that sound. Turn it off. Take a look again. Very well heated. So let me come in. The camera's in my way, so it's not easy. Let me come in from the top and try and block it. You ready to try this? So I block that side. Nothing. All right. This one right here. So the reason why this is not powering up properly is because there's a component that was damaged on this board right over here. That integrated circuit, I'm going to have to contact the company, see if they could send me a replacement board. I'll swap out the board and hopefully this powers back up. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.